Hello dear students we are going to discuss today on the concept of diffusion and dissolution part second The dissolution test has evolved to become a definitive tool used to characterize the performance characteristic of solid doses forms as solid doses form have become more unique over the last 40 years dissolution apparatus have required continuous improvement and modification when necessary to provide suitable condition for performance testing in the body a pharmaceutical active ingredient must be in solution before it can be absorbed by the blood and ultimately carry to the receptor site to render a therapeutic effect or we can say in vivo solid oral doses forms typically begin to disintegrate and dissolve in the stomach the resulting solution passes into the small intestine where dissolution continues the dissolved active ingredient is absorbed into the blood stream through the walls of the small intestine the blood carries the active ingredient to the site of therapeutic effect basically the dissolution test mimics the first several stages of that process under very controlled laboratory conditions some conditions for immediate release products are wetting in the stomach disintegration in the stomach deaggregation in the stomach dissolution in the stomach and intestine permeation through the intestinal wall absorption into the blood stream transit to the therapeutic site decomposition and elimination dissolution may be defined as the movement of solid particulate matter into the solvent while in absolute temperature and solvent composition the time required to move the unit amount of solid matter into the solution is called as dissolution it can be considered as a specific type of reaction in which a mass transfer results as a net effective between deposition and movement of solute at a solid liquid interface from solid particular matter dissolution process is basically important for the permeation of drug through the biological membrane typically process involved dissolution of solid doses forms are showing on the screen here the solid doses form initially gets disintegrate into granules and further granules get disintegrated into fine particles leading to a dissolution and finally absorption from this flow diagram it could be can understand easily that the action of any drug formulation is dissolution rate limited or permeation rate limited but the solubility is the first and foremost requirement for the absorption of any drug because of specific characteristic of the biological membrane that is selective permeable now we move to the module 2 here we will discuss all the theories of dissolution there are three major theories of dissolution as mentioned here first diffusion layer model or we can say film theory and second one dankwart model or we can say penetration or surface renewal theory and third one is interfacial barrier model or we can say double barrier mechanism or limited solvation theory first we will take a discussion regarding diffusion layer model or film theory it is a simplest model where dissolution of crystal immersed in a liquid takes place without involving reactive or electrical forces the diffusion layer theory was originally proposed by nernst and bruner according to him when a solid material is placed in the solvent system a diffusion layer or a stagnant layer of specific thickness that is h get formed surrounding to the surface of the particle at the solid liquid interface called as a stagnant film or diffusion layer which is saturated with the drug this step is usually rapid movement of drug occurs from stagnant layer or saturated layer to the bulk solution leading to rapid diffusion here this can be easily understand that this dissolution of the drug particle by diffusion system is favored by difference between 
the concentration of drug at stagnant layer that is CS and concentration in the bulk solution that is CB. The basic model can be seen on the screen. We have solid liquid interface at the junction of solid particle and liquid. Another we have stagnant layer of thickness H and concentration CS. Diffusion molecule diffuses from that stagnant layer to the bulk solution. By this we can draw one formula that is DC upon DT equals to K C S minus CV where DC upon DT equals to dissolution rate of the drug K is dissolution rate constant that is of first order C S equals to concentration of drug in a stagnant layer or we can say saturation or maximum drug solubility and C V is the concentration of drug in bulk of the solution at time T. At the same time the rate of dissolution is also favored by surface area that is A while unfavored by volume of the solution that is B and thickness H of the stagnant layer. Brunner and Tolosko incorporated surface area in noise witten equation and form a new equation that is DC upon DT equals to K1A in bracket CS minus CB. Afterwards, Brunner incorporated Fick's law of diffusion and expanded his given equation to include diffusion coefficient that is D, thickness of stagnant diffusion layer that is H and volume of dissolution medium that is B. A new equation generated by Brunner is DC upon DT equals to DAK water in oil in bracket CS minus CB upon V into H where D is diffusion coefficient of the drug, A equals to surface area of dissolving solid, K water in oil equals to water in oil partition coefficient of the drug considering the fact that dissolution body fluid are aqueous since the rapidity with which a drug dissolved depends on the partition coefficient of water in oil. It is also called as intrinsic dissolution rate constant where V is volume of dissolution medium, H is the thickness of a stagnant layer where CS minus CB equals to concentration gradient for diffusion. This equation describes a first order dissolution kinetics. It represents dissolution under non-sync condition. If volume is relatively large such as showing on your screen, the equation get further modified leading to a new equation. CS is greater than CV, so DC upon DT equals to AK water in oil upon VH into CS. CS and D are constant for each specific chemical substance. DC upon DT equals to K1A upon VH. That is K1 equals to K water in oil into D into CS. V and A kept constant during dissolution test. So, we can say DC upon DT equals to K. For obtaining in vitro in vivo correlation, sync condition can be achieved by replacing the saturated solution from the fresh solvent time to time, increasing the volume of dissolution fluid or removing the dissolved drug by partitioning it from the aqueous phase to dissolution fluid into the organic phase placed either above or below the dissolution fluid, for example, hexane or chloroform. Adding a water miscible solvent such as alcohol to the dissolution fluid or by adding selected adsorbent to remove the dissolution drug. In vitro sink condition is so maintained that CV, that is concentration of drug in bulk, always less than 10% of CS concentration of drug in stagnant layer. Diffusion layer theory was extended by hexon krobel cube root relationship. hexon krobel have derived another equation for predicting the dissolution of particle considering that the regular area of any particle is proportional to the cubic root of its volume. This expression is implicated for the formulation like tablets. Hexon and Crowell modified the equation to represent rate of appearance of solute by weight in solution by multiplying both side of volume term. 
we can say w o to the power 1 by 3 minus w to the power 1 by 3 equals to k t where w o equals to original mass of the drug w equals to mass of drug remaining to dissolve at time t k equals to dissolution rate constant second model of dissolution was given by Dankmuert that is penetration or surface renewal theory this theory assumes that solvent move towards the saturated layer at the solid solution interface in the form of fresh solvent packets due to turbulence present in the system. This theory could be better understood by the equation and picture showing on your screen. Ci equals to initial concentration of drug at the surface and Cb equals to concentration of drug at the bulk fluid. Here, we have seen that as the fresh packets get moved constantly at the interface, saturation never occurs at this point. At the similar time, as the system continuously forms turbulence, no stagnant layer gets formed while the surface continually being replaced with fresh liquid. The third model of dissolution is interfacial barrier model or we can say double barrier or limited solvation theory in this model in comparison to the diffusion layer theory it is assumed that the reaction at solid surface is not instantaneous and rapid due to high free energy of activation required that is the reaction at solid surface and its diffusion across the interface is slower than diffusion across liquid film therefore the rate of solubility of solid in liquid film becomes the rate limiting than the diffusion of dissolved molecule that is G equals to Ki in bracket Cs minus Cv where G is dissolution per unit area, Ki equals to effective interfacial transport constant. In this theory, the diffusivity D may not be independent of saturation concentration that is Cs. The interfacial barrier model can be extended to both diffusion layer model and the Dankwert model. Now we move to the next module that is module 3. Here we will discuss the importance and application of diffusion and dissolution. First, Dissolution test is used to measure the release of active substances, usually single ingredient, from the different formulations such as tablet, capsules, etc. Second one, product quality and batch to batch consistency is being assured by in vitro test of formulation. Third, prototype formulation can be selected by the in vitro dissolution. Fourth, effect of formulation additive manufacturing process etc could be assessed by such test fifth potential problems can be identified related to in vivo release and bioavailability absorption after administration of drug sixth it may help as better tool to assess stability and product storage condition seventh it can ensure bioavailability of product and may be used as tool for bioweavers Application of dissolution system in a single frame could be better understand by the picture showing on your screen. Here I would like to mention some modification which may be done to achieve better in vitro and in vivo correlation. Some major modification which, which may be done are surfactant materials such as sodium laurel sulfate can be added for the dissolution study of hydrophobic drug. Second one, the agitation speed could be kept high if dissolution study of erodible system has to be done. Next, the pepsin and pancreatin like enzymes may be used to dissolve the shell of hard gelatin capsules. Vegetable oils can be added to study the effect of food.